Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Gabriel with another Fan TV. Back at you another video. Like the content of this video. Keep smashing that like button. Y'all been killing it, doing a great job. Hey, look, man, you know we're going to bring that Ravens content daily. So if you like the content of this channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Um, I, if this is your first time watching the channel, listen, I'm, I'm doing Ravens content every day. You can check the channel. You can see that. I'm giving my opinion, my viewpoint. And um, if you like hearing about Ravens football talk, Go ahead, subscribe to the channel, man. But so we're going to get into Ravers training camp day 10, uh, officially in double digits now, and what happened today. So let's talk about, you know, injuries and things like that, okay? Uh, Bateman, Linderbaum, Boyle, Humphrey, Campbell, and Brandon Stevens are out of practice today. Uh, Humphrey and Campbell seem to be veteran rest days. Uh, the Ravens are doing this. They're rotating their guys in and out, and everybody's not practicing every day which is fine. That's how it needs to go. They don't want to overexert these guys right now. Uh, okay, so Nick Boyle is kind of the same. It's on an every other day schedule. So I guess one day on, one day off kind of thing. And um, if that's what they need to do for Nick Boyle to be healthy, that's what it is. Um, I say this every time. Greg Roman, John Harbaugh, they value Nick Boyle highly as a blocking tight end and a tight end that can also catch some passes at some times. So with that being said, they want him healthy. They want him out there. So Devin DuVernay back. Devin DuVernay missed pretty much exactly a week because uh, last time he was out there was the stadium practice, but he was back out there today. They said that the Devin DuVernay probably could have back could have been back at practice a couple of days ago, but the Ravens have been playing it safe. They've been playing it cautious, which is the, the thing that the Ravens want to do most: play it cautious now, so we can get to the season healthy. And let it all hang out there. All right. Now, there was a Mark Andrews injury scare at practice, they said. Um, I don't know if he jumped on something and landed wrong or a divot in the ground came up. But once that happened, John Harbaugh pulled Mark Andrews out of practice. He didn't practice again. Not because Andrews was hurt, but because John Harbaugh said he had seen enough. He didn't need um, any more for Mark Andrews. That was it. So, uh, once again, the Ravens playing the safe. They even if something happens on the field that they don't even that they don't like to see, you out of here. All right, and that's what happened with Andrews. Now, an actual injury was Stephen Means. Stephen Means got hurt. I'm not sure if it was an ankle or something like that, but he's an outside linebacker for the Ravens. They just signed him this off season. He had a trial with the Ravens. Obviously, he impressed enough in his trial to to make the roster, not make the roster, but make the uh, the training camp invite. Um, but he got hurt today. So now this leaves the Ravens with a position where they were already really, really thin at outside linebacker. There is virtually no depth at outside linebacker now. All right. We have Hayes, uh, Owe, uh, Justin Houston. And that's virtually it right now. So the Ravens need to make major moves and sign two or three guys right now. Because with Bowser out with injury, with Ojabo out with injury, uh, ben Spiegel going down for the season with his Achilles injury a couple days ago. The Ravens virtually have no healthy outside linebackers. And that's going to be a very, very serious issue um, that the Ravens need to address and need to address immediately. So, Jason Pierre Paul's out there. Y'all had a visit with the Ravens. That's the guy I like to see them bring into the building and um, actually sign. We'll see if that happens. All right. So, let's talk about the offense, okay? Today was a lot of practice. So, it didn't, it didn't seem like too much happened on either side of the ball. But the reports are that Lamar Jackson didn't have his greatest day throwing the ball, which is all right. Um, nine times out of ten so far in this training camp, Lamar Jackson has been excellent. He's been great. He's been sharp. So he wasn't. She wasn't his best today. All right, it happens. But he did make plays throwing the football. Of course, he always does. One play included a, I believe, it was a thirty or forty yard touchdown to Jalen Moore. Now Jalen Moore. Oh, this was an eleven on eleven drills as well. So, Jalen Moore keeps making plays, and he keeps putting himself out there for that wide receiver five position. And honestly, we have to say it, maybe even wide receiver four, just because Tylen Wallace has been so up and down. We don't know exactly what that – I think the, I don't think the Ravens know exactly what they're getting from Tylen Wallace on a day-to-day -day basis. He is immensely talented, um, I think a really, really good young player, but you got to put that on the field. Right now, a guy like Jalen Moore is showing up every day. He's putting it on the field. And the Ravens are noticing, man. So if the Ravens are looking at their depth chart objectively, they're seeing Jalen Moore keep popping up, keep popping up. Slade Bolden. Slade Bolden is another guy, right? He made his best camp, uh, best play of the camp so far. 
diving touchdown in the uh, back of the end zone. I think about a 10-yard grab from Lamar Jackson in the – so red zone, 11 on 11 drills. So Slade Bolden's making a play. I've heard about Shamar Bridges making plays, right? So Tyler Wall's got to step it up. He has to step it up. I, I have faith in Tyler Wall. I think he's – like I said, he's a really good young player, but he has to show and prove on the field, all right? So that's – that's it as far as what I could get as far as offensive highlights for today's practice. Like I said, not too much happened, but a guy like Jalen Moore is a name that you should remember because he continues to stand out and he's a very he's very well the guy that could be that wide receiver five or maybe even a little higher for the Ravens. So we'll see. Okay. Now on defense, uh Adafi Owe continues to shine. He continues to wreck the offensive line. Apparently, he wrecked. Uh, two offensive linemen, two separate plays to to get some pressures on the QB. And then there was one play also where he came free for a sack. So Adafi Owe is, we just talked about outside linebacker being a streaming thing. He's the guy that the Ravens are going to lean on heavily. Him and Justin Houston, Dalen Hayes, but specifically uh, Adafi Owe to get sacks this year. I say I believe in a, a video a day or two ago from training camp reports that my goal for Dalen, uh, sorry, for Adafi Owe is nine sacks plus because we need him to get at least nine. And if he can hit double digits, that's great. Um, he's a good young player. He can stop. He can stop the run, hold, hold the edge. Now this year with Mike McDonald, he's not going to be asked so much to drop into coverage. He's going to be able to do what he does best and rush the passer with that speed, with that power, and with some of that new moves he's getting from guys like Justin Houston. Calais Campbell, you know, he's learning from these guys. I mean, he refers to Justin Houston as Sensei. So, um, I know it's a funny nickname, but I take it as he's a guy who's a student of the game and he wants to learn from a vet like Justin Houston who has done it and put the work in. So, I'm excited for Adafi Owe. He continues to make plays. He continues to ball out. The Ravens are going to need him. They're going to need his passage ability this uh, upcoming season. Now, another guy. I didn't mention him yesterday because I wasn't sure too, too sure who he was. You know, could have just been one day. But then today, he's out there making plays again. So I'm starting to hear his name repeatedly. Cornerback, uh, UDFA cornerback, David Vereen from uh, Newberry College in South Carolina. I had to look that up, right? Apparently, he's not allowing any catches. Almost had a pick today. And he's playing his role at cornerback really well. These are the kind of guys when preseason comes around that you got to keep your eye on. I think he's wearing, uh, I looked at the Ravens website, I think he's wearing 33. So these are the kind of guys where it's like, all right, he can make a play. He can make his play. Let me see if I can spot him in preseason doing the same thing. So when the Ravens go and play the Titans next week, that's the guy I will watch out for. David Vereen, number 33. I've heard his name in multiple reports. I heard his name in the report yesterday. I didn't mention it. And now I'm hearing it today again. So I got to mention that he's putting that work out there on the field. So he deserves to be mentioned. The Ravens already have a lot of cornerbacks, so he could very well be trying out for a uh, practice squad or maybe even another team entirely who could use his services if he keeps playing to the level he's playing at, right? All right, so that's pretty much it for offense, defense. Now, what else happened today? Um, John Harbaugh said in his press conference that Lamar Jackson, uh, Justin Houston, Clarence Campbell, Mark Andrews, Marcus Williams, they will not play in the preseason opener versus Tennessee, and all I got, all I can do is applaud that. I made a pre, I made a video a while ago talking about should the Ravens change their approach to preseason because I was talking about the Rams model. The Rams don't play really virtually any of their starters in the preseason, and they just won Super Bowl and they've been a successful team since Sean McVay has been there. So I like that. The football is already a game where every play is a risk. Why well, take more risk in games that don't mean anything? Let the guys who are trying to make the team at the back end of the roster, let those guys play the game. I hope that John Harbaugh doesn't just take this for this game, but he does it for the rest of the preseason, honestly. There's only certain guys that need reps. Now, Nick Boyle is a guy that said he wants to play in the preseason because he wouldn't feel right going into live game action without any, taking any snaps. So, I mean, if Nick Boyle wasn't playing in the preseason, I guess we'll see what they do with that and see if they put him out there for maybe a drive or two. Um, but the way that they emphasize is important. I can't imagine he plays too long. All right, um, preseason for me is for the young guys. Lastly, Ravens ended the practice about 30 minutes early. Uh, they've been practicing for six straight days, Monday to Saturday. It's hot. Uh, it's been hot all week. It was hot again today. 
So the Ravens end the practice, man, and uh, 30 minutes early, which is good. Give the guys a rest. The Ravens are off tomorrow. So there will be no camp update tomorrow, but I will be dropping another video tomorrow. Don't you worry. More Ravens news coming. And uh, that's it for the Ravens training camp day 10. It's your boy Gabriel with another fan TV. I'm out.